Out here. This is Vern Morgan from South Dakota. Yes. And his lineage of judo coincides with ours a few generations back. So I okay. asked him to step in and lay some mojo on us. Okay. Um, I, the part that I'm going to show you actually comes from Stephen Cunningham. Mm -hmm. Stephen Cunningham trained with Taizo Sone who was an eighth degree black belt who came to the United States back in the 50s and settled, it started first, settled first in California and then settled in Florida. Steve Cunningham started his judo training at six years of age and Taizo Sone kind of became a father to him and so he taught Steve Cunningham how to do, how to speak and write Japanese and also led him through some of the Chinese classics. Taizo Sone learned at the Kodokan his, he was a direct student of Jigoro Kano and three tenth degree black belts. And what I'm going to talk about is the Gokyo no Waza as a teaching syllabus. And uh, this came from, uh, from Sone, who said that this was the, the teaching standard at the Kodokan in the early part of the 1900s. Um, the Gokyo no Waza, is, as you know, is 40 techniques of judo. Sometimes it's just like a bucket and and they, they have all 40 techniques in the bucket and they say these are the 40 techniques of judo. But there's actually a structure to the Gokyo no Waza that, that most people aren't aware of. And to start with, the Gokyo no Waza it, it's a mathematical structure and so everything along one line has a relationship and everything along the columns also has a relationship. We talk about the Gokyo and kyo is just means category or class, and so there's a first class, a second class, a third class, fourth class, and fifth class. But the the vertical columns in the in the gokyo no waza are called dons, and so there's a first don, second, third, fourth, and so on through eighth don, and each one of these dons has a movement principle that's associated with it. And the kata is also, I mean the the gokyo is also divided in the middle, so there. Are, four techniques, the first four techniques, and the last four techniques. The first four techniques are, are all retreating techniques. The last four techniques, or the last four columns, are all um, entering techniques, or stickiness techniques, or pushing techniques. So what I want to do is I just want to go through a few techniques and kind of show you the difference between um, for example uh, Ogoshi and Ukigoshi. One is rotation over an oblique axis while pushing, that's ogoshi, and versus rotation over an oblique axis while pulling, which is ukigoshi. And so there's two different principles of movement that separate this. I don't know about you, but, but I go to a lot of places and, see, and say, some, ask somebody, do ogoshi, and they just do an ukigoshi with a, with a half a hip. You know, and so there isn't really an awful lot of difference in some people's minds, but this is really a distinct difference between ogoshi and ukigoshi, and just want to show you real quickly what this looks like. And I think we can probably end up doing this with very, very little throwing, or, and, or, or falling, I should say, and so you kind of get a quick idea of, of kind of how this structure works and kind of how it's organized. So. Okay, we'll start with Ogoshi. I'll use you. There's an old style of Ogoshi that, that doesn't involve a complete turn of the body. And um, this style of Ogoshi, you step to the side and you push from the side this way and as you push across, you insert your hip very quickly at the very end of it and so he rotates over the top of the hip. So. I won't throw you, mm -hmm. but just step to the side, and it kind of feels like you're like like you're doing a football dummy. Okay, so shoulder is forward, the hip is back, and as I drive through, I want to maintain that relationship until just the very last second, and then I'm going to insert my hip in there. A lot of runs, yeah. Okay, so why don't you guys try that just once, and just just kind of get that feeling for what that looks like. I'll coach you through it, and make sure you got that right, and then we'll go to Uki Goshi, and I'll show you that one. Okay, so go ahead. Step Yep, right foot way to the side, turn, yep, drop your hand around behind the back. Now push him as you drive him across, as your hip comes across, and then you pull him across the hip. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's, that's the feeling of rotation over an oblique axis while pushing. And the oblique axis this time is the side of your body. It's, it's the edge of the hip. Big right step. Yes. Okay, a little bit more push him first, and then it's kind of like tripping him. It, yeah, you insert that hip at the very last instant. Push him. There you go. Yes. Yep. The Gokyo no Waza, the first Kyo, the Ikyo or Dai Ikyo, the Gokyo no Waza means that there's one arc in the throw. And so this is a very simple throw and you can see as you're stepping and you're pushing and everything goes off in one direction. Okay? The, if you take a next step up and you go to Dai Nikyo, the second layer, it's Tayatoshi. Now, just think of what we did. And so I'm going to do Tayatoshi by coming over here and doing the same thing, but this time I don't put my arm around behind his back. This time I only have the hand in the front. So I'm taking that same step across and I'm pressing, but this time I have to control everything with hands and I don't make any contact with the body. Can you see the relationship and how Ogoshi and Tayatoshi are very close together in that regard? Mm. Same mm -hmm. thing. I was here and did this. Now I'm here and I do this. Nice thing about this is that, is that I don't really have to come and make a block at the ankle in order to make this work. All I have to do is just drop my body weight and over he goes. Mm. It becomes an otoshi. As you were talking about earlier, I saw that otoshi movement that you were talking about. Ogoshi in this case is really that same kind of an otoshi movement, something that I never considered before. Okay, so we got o ogoshi. We just talked a little bit about taitoshi. Now we're going to do ukigoshi. And ukigoshi works from a timing step, so there has to be a, a walking step here in order to make this work. And what I want to do is, is he takes that step and I take a different step. My arm wraps around behind his back. I turn my feet pretty much in the same direction that his feet are. And all I want to do is I want him to lean against me. So notice that I'm not trying to support him at this point. I'm, my hips are free to move, but he's leaning against the upper part of my body. I'm not going to throw you, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my hip backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. You like that. Beginners do too. <laughs> so as he comes forward, I just get into position, get this lean forward. Most of my weight is on my front leg. My back leg is very light. Pull him to my hip. Now I'm just going to back my hip up. <laughs> and it's real easy from there just to make the throw. Yeah. <laughs> everybody everybody wants to feel it. Everybody wants to feel it. Here, here I'm leaning forward. Then I just go. <laughs> so this is this this is the hippie movement. You know, all all you want to do is this is Koshi Haneri. It's it's to get that hip to move. You push Uke behind you. Now he gets behind you. I'm pulling him over an oblique axis. So we're talking about that same oblique axis. This time it's a pulling motion and you're pulling him over instead of pushing him over. Before we pushed over and we just inserted a hip at the last instant, this is now pulling around, getting that hip to go backwards. Once he's going backwards, then you pull him over. So what we're talking about is right at Kake. So as we're making the throw, this is, it's either a push or a pull. And so that's the way the structure of the Gokyo is set up. Why don't you guys try that once with yourself? <coughs> Step across with your right foot instead of stepping back. Yep. Turn toward me. Feet toward me. Lean towards your, put your weight on your front foot. Okay. Now backspin him. Rotate your hip backwards. Rotate my hip backwards. Yeah. Not lifting. As you're standing here, do this. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. It's it's a real it's a real simple little motion. It's got a tremendous amount of power to it. And yep, get him leaning on you. <laughs> 
Weight on your front foot. Okay, don't put your hip up. Don't. Yeah, do it. All right, turn your feet. Knee front, front, put your weight on your front foot. Okay. Put your hip down a little bit. So I'm, so you feel like your oh, hip so can move. I was like this. That's before. right, okay. yeah. Right. Okay. You, you want to feel like your hip is, is free to move, okay? Okay. So yeah, now you're free to move. As soon as you back your foot up, see what happens? Mm -hmm. so, so the idea is to keep that hip, put that foot forward for me. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is I want to do this. See how you lean more mm -hmm. up here on yeah. the upper chest? Yeah. So that my hip is really free to move. If I do this now, I've locked my hip yeah. in place. Okay. So you want to drop down so that your hip is really free to move through that. Okay. That's, where, that's where that hand comes in because that hand gives enough pressure against the hip to make your partner go along with the hip when you, when you spin it. Gotcha. Try it one more time. Now back spin. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. All right. The next next technique I'm going to take is hisagaruma. Um, hisagaruma. The principle for hisagaruma and all the rest of those techniques that run above it is called circle. And it's a horizontal circle. And so what we're studying is if I, I can make use of horizontal circ circular motion in order to improve the quality of my throwing technique. So one of the problems that we have when we're doing hisagaruma or beginners have is they, they get to this position here, they slide their foot up, and then they shift back and all of his weight ends up going onto his right foot, or his left foot, I'm sorry onto his left foot. And now when you come up this way, he can just pick his foot up and step over the top of it. So it's very easy for him to move. The trick is, is making a horizontal circle with the hips. And so I push him backwards this way, here, and he gets back here, and I've got all of his weight on his right foot, and I've moved my left, my right foot forward to the position where I want it to go. Instead of going translating this way, notice it brings him back. Instead of translating this way, I'm gonna circle my hips back. Notice where he went. He's still on his right foot. I just shifted to my right foot. Now all I have to do is bring up the leg and continue my circular motion and over he goes. Okay? So drive him back, slide my foot up, and then rotate that circular motion back onto my right foot. Get my balance back by rotating onto that foot. Now I'm guessing that probably everybody, a lot of people do, do this already but you just don't think about it. And so this is really nice in that it gives you to think about some of these key points about the nage no kata, about, about the, uh, uh, not nage no kata, but the, about the judo techniques themselves. And so now it gives you a different way of kind of thinking about that. If you ever had a problem with he's a groomer, that person always kept shifting their weight. Now you've got a way of attacking it that gets you thinking about how to shift your weight back while leaving Uke's weight still on his right foot. Why don't you guys play with that just just for a second? Rotate back. You, if, see, I, if I shift back here, like yeah. See how it see his it fixes his foot up. So instead of going down, I'm gonna rotate your hip. There you go. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> Yeah, push his foot backwards there. Now, then slide your left, your right foot up. There you go, and rotate around. See how you keep him on that, on that right foot. You, you, you put that weight on that foot, and you keep it there. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to take one step up. We're going to go into Dainikyo. It's the same principle. It's a circular principle. It's Koichigari. And so, Koichigari, I'm going to take this step back. I need to step back behind my own foot 
Nice thing is that if I, with a little bit of a draw, his foot comes out really close to where my foot is. So if I draw him a little bit, I can get his foot almost in front of mine. The circular motion is my hip motion. And I think, to me, as an engineer, the reason for taking the circular motion is, is because it drives your feet faster. Circular centrifugal motion force is, is, a, is a squared function where, where linear motion is just a linear function, mv squared, mv versus mv squared. So I can move faster going in a circle than I can go linearly. Hmm. So the key is to this one is as I take that step back, I can twist my hips around very, very quickly. And so this is the, circle, the horizontal circle in this one. It's just use it, concentrating on making that circular motion with the hips. I can drive my feet to move faster than what they would, what I, what I might be able to do by just thinking I'm walking. Okay, so I'm concentrating on the circular motion, trying to improve that to make it go faster. So. <laughs> Go ahead, try it. Con concentrate as you're coming back to put your foot as close to the back as you can. This is kind of the figure skater thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got their arms out, and then they pull their arms in and they go faster. So think about, think about that as, as you're making that step back that you want to place it really close to the other one. And then if you're with a little bit of a draw, you can get your partner to step further than what he wants to and you should be able to come right out in the back of his foot without having to reach. Yes. That was very nice. quicker, make that hip move faster. There you go. See how you, you speed, sped up the hips and your feet move a lot faster. Yeah. Okay, next, te next technique is Osotogari. Osotogari is called, the principle for Osotogari and all those techniques in that column is, is called turn and push or turn and press. And um, I think I'll go back to a little bit of anatomy first. If you take a look at the foot, if I push him backwards, he rolls over his heels. But if I pull him forward, he may take a step, but, but his toes dig in just a little bit before. So it's a little bit, maybe just only a pound or two force that I can put in and everybody will resist back just a tad just because of the shape of their foot okay so I want to make use of, of that foot shape in order to do osotogari and what I'm going to do with that is 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 as I take this step to the side here I'm going to pull him a little bit on his onto his left foot with my right hand so I'm pulling him over here and as I'm as I rotate my hip back I shift him over to his right foot and now I shift him onto his heel and all I've done is just rolled my hip. So this is a turn. So I step here and I step, uh, it's kind of an empty step to start out with because I haven't transferred any weight to it. And as I start transferring weight, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pull a little bit on his collar. I'm gonna shift the weight over. Then I'm gonna come over and pull him up onto that foot. Then the leg comes through and takes a, takes that motion. Now, I'm just gonna do a couple uchikomis of this, okay? So. <laughs> it's got a lot of power to it and it gets away from that feeling of whenever you're trying to get somebody onto their leg if you step this way they always walk backwards and so even this uh, you're trying to pull down to get the person from not taking a step on there and this works so much easier okay <laughs> why don't you guys try that Yes. That makes sense. 
that's actually better what he was doing because I was pulling before I moved. Mm. And, and actually, when, when you get when it when it starts to smooth out a little bit, you pull yourself right into it. So I pull my pull my foot into it. It goes empty first, and then as I'm pulling, as I'm making that turn into it and shifting weight, shift him across the front and then onto his heel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, foot's that foot's trapped because 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 it it, it it you go onto your toes pretty easily you don't roll onto your heel very well at all because as soon as you start rolling onto your heel you want to step off it but if you roll toes first across the toes and then across the outside of the foot you go onto the heel there's no way of stepping off it because you're you're on it and you can't get off it that's really cool that way um, I've got maybe two other techniques we'll talk about um, we're going to talk about Ochigari which is a which is a spiraling out motion so um, this one is it's got a fo odd footstep to it but I, lo I love it just because it's kind of crazy instead of what, what I want to do is I want to turn my heel completely to the side and I want to take a step notice what happened he walked right across my leg all I have to do is just bring my leg out and sweep it okay mm -hmm. so toe goes off heel turns straight out 90 degrees <laughs> <laughs> okay so heel out pull and this motion is uh, I teach this to my students and they 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 struggle trying to get their heel out to the side in this rocking back motion and the pull of across the body um, but this can be done even from jigo tie so you know you see in tournament where guys are out like this I can do this out here <laughs> You know, so I mean, you can be you can be out at quite some distance and still get the feeling of that. Would you like to feel it? Oh, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of a lot of drive. That's a that's a lot of pull. Mm -hmm, it is, yeah. Oh, very nice. You guys try it. <laughs> Don't leave your foot there. So bring your yeah even even more try to try to just yeah, there really. really on your toes there you go there you go Yeah. I didn't let my hips do it. Yep. 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 Okay, next one above this is Harai Goshi. So this is the second two arc throw using the same movement principle of spiral out starts out with the same foot movement seems odd but I'm here I'm gonna go this way he goes around I'm stepping right in front of him here and I'm gonna take my leg the same direction I take it for Ochigari so all the way around to the back hmm. all right hmm. you want to take a fall sure okay so out here comes around back Smooth, isn't it? That's nice. Yeah, good. Try it. Oh, you want to, you want to feel it? <laughs> it's the only way I learned. It's the heroin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that 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 throw got spoiled in the middle of it. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Try it. That's that's that is yeah. Okay, so. I guess not the way I use it. <laughs> All right, so I am, I'm doing the same. Same thing. Heel out. Get him to come around behind. 
really loading up. He'll walk right up on your back. Elbow down. There you go. Now step back into him. That's it. This one, this one's got kind of a motion of a twisting, so that upper body goes one direction and the lower body goes another direction. It's like ringing a dish rag. Yeah, you got the you got the kind of the idea of how the body moves through that. All you need to do is pick up the leg, and you'd have that. Yeah, and the leg doesn't even have to go. It doesn't even have to pick up much. It just kind of there. That's it. That's it. It's more of a dish rag motion rather than a lifting the leg motion way up. Yep. You just kind of get in there and you just kind of twist real quick and knock him over. That's that's the end of my presentation. Do you have? Bravo. We'll yep. get some more from you later. I hope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bravo. We face the camera. I'm going to introduce this. So, um, we're going to do Zen Judo. Zen Judo comes from England. Um, Dominic McCarthy studied judo with Kenshiro Abe and when uh, there was a political um, merger of sorts in England and what was Zen Judo was Kyushin Do Society got um, uh, merged with another group and so disappeared. And Dominic McCarthy liked the, the Kyushin Do curriculum like the like the syllabus and the method of teaching and so he decided he was going to continue it he just renamed it Zen Judo but it comes from the Buto Kukwai in Kyoto which was a martial arts teachers college that was established in 1905 um, there's a picture at the grand opening and Jigoro Kano sits right down in the center of the picture front row and so and, and from what I understand from my reading that he was a little bit involved in in the development of the program at the at the Buto Kukwai. So, so some of the, there's a little bit of Kano Judo in here too, but it's very, very different than the Kodokan Judo um, in, the, in the way that it's structured and the way that it's presented. So we're just going to go ahead and start with, with the first technique, and if I can use John as my uke. Um, in Zen Judo, they don't use Osotogari. They start out with a technique called Ashigake, and all the first techniques are all basically sit down and roll to your back techniques and not big throws. And so it's ideal for beginners, people who don't have much in the way of falling experience because there aren't any big falls with it. So it step to the side, hook the leg, and then take another step and just kind of help your partner down to the ground. And that's ashigake. Do it again. Doesn't require an awful lot. I, I it, when I first start with this, people just kind of stand still with this, but eventually I go back to that, that little bit of a circling technique that I talk about to get them onto their heel, then block that leg, and then walk through it, and just set your partner down to the ground, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Go ahead, give it a try. Thank you. A little bit more. Ashigake. And one of the things that I talk about when, when I'm working with beginners with this is, is uh, body position when you finish up with this. I like, we always go from here to, ash, or to um, Juji Gatame, straight arm bar. So here, knock my partner down. And when I come up, I want to put my foot, my shin, right up against the side of his rib cage, right underneath his armpit. So he can't roll back toward me. And I'm going to then just bend over, and we're not going to do the arm bar, but I can just bend over at this point and I can sit down and put my leg over across the top of his face, so that's so I can't see him cry. <laughs> okay, so, so you need little mnemonics for, for beginners, you know, so they remember all those little bits and details. But then all you do is just sit down, pull in nice and tight, and then you've got Jujigatame. And it's one of the techniques that I teach to beginners right away so that they begin to pay attention to eat and have a conversation with each other. And so as they start pulling on it, I tell them, talk to each other about the arm bar. And they go, it's getting tight, it's getting tight, it's getting tight. Ooh, it's starting to hurt. Oh, it hurts. And then they tap. 
And so they, we start this conversation very, very early on in the beginning of the class so that the students get used to the idea of talking to each other all the time while they're on the mat because we are dealing with something that is potentially very dangerous and so we want to be careful. Okay, next technique. Kochi makikomi. So in this one I want to pull my partner's foot forward and I'm just going to trap the back of the heel and I'm going to put my hand right here on his knee and he's just going to sit down. It's just a kochigari with a with a hand down. Actually, you, it used to be that you could do this in sport judo, but just about five years ago they decided you can't touch the leg anymore. But it used to be one of my favorite techniques because I could catch just about anybody with this. And just tip them over. So go ahead and try that. <laughs> okay, now we get to fun. Now we get to a combination. And so we're going to take the two techniques that we have and we're going to make a combination out of them. So I'm going to step back, capture his foot. He's going to step out and back. And as he steps out and back, I'm going to follow. And this is a, this same thing about, about slow being better than being fast. Because I don't want to try to beat him to the step. So I come here, I want him to, he's down, I'm down. It means I can step exactly where I want to step. So now I can step where I want to step, and he's off balance. He's right on the side of his foot towards the heel. I can do ashigake. So he goes back, I follow, and then ashigake. Okay, you give it a try. Right here. Yeah. When you have beginners, they just get the idea that they're supposed to hang on in one place forever. You know, so they, they, they just go forever for it. So this is hand down, drop down, and as he steps back, hand re-engages again. Mm. So, down, up. And so, and so the students begin to learn that they can move their hands from one position to another position in the middle of that, that there's openings in order to make that happen. And it's advantageous to do that, okay? Okay. Counter one. <laughs> Counter one is about as easy of a technique as you can get. You're going to do ashigake, so just you step in for ashigake. All I did is backspin. All right. So he comes in, and I'm just going to turn right next to him and do a backspin. So counter one. All right, go ahead and try that a couple times. We're talking about, everybody knows what Kesa Katame is, so let me use you, John. So we're going to start out with Kochimaki Komi. So I go Kochimaki Komi, and John steps back, and I do Ashigake, and he falls to the ground, and I fall to the ground next to him, and I do Kesa Katame, and now he does bridge and roll escape. And he gets a hold down. So we just put together, I just put together strings like that all the time. Mm. So we always go from one technique to another technique and so there's plenty of, plenty of things to do and lots of things to occupy minds with. All right, one more time. <laughs> all right. Kochimaki Komi, Ashigake, just follow down. Kesagatame, bridge and roll escape. <coughs> All right, new technique, kube nage. Kube means neck, and there actually is a neck throw that's, that's kind of a violent throw where you really crank on the neck, but this is less so, this is more like a koshiguruma than a, than a kubenage, but that's what the Zen syllabus calls it. They call it kubenage, but it's but really more of a very light around the neck. The, most of the motion, actually, most of the power comes from the sleeve hand and from a pull. So all I'm gonna do is I step in front, arm goes up high and lightly across the back, pulls around the outside. So now we got a forward throw. Very light, very easy. Step in, 
And the key to this is, turn a little bit here. The key to this is, one of the things that I know about beginners is they do what I call accommodation. All right, and so you say, all right, you're supposed to turn around and grab the person's arm or grab the person's neck and then you throw him. And so they do this. Notice that John is standing here and he's not gonna move at all. And now I, I'm trying to do something and he, there's no kazushi. So I emphasize from the beginning that I wanna lead with this hand and I want to, I was just gonna do Ipan, so I'm not gonna step, turn. So he's leaning against me, pull around to the outside. All right, so everybody do kube nage. Okay, let's, let's put this together with the other pieces. Like I said, I don't let things stand in isolation for too long, so. So this is gonna start out with, um, let's see. You're gonna start out with kochi makikomi. So there, I step back, you do ashigake. I do counter one, you don't fall over, you just step your leg out of it. So he steps out of it, and I do kubenage. Hmm. So, ashigake doesn't require necessarily that you throw somebody, but it's a disruptor. Okay, so if you come in, uh, I'll come in for osotogari or ashigake, and you just do counter one, and I'm gonna step out of it. Hmm. All right, so I come in. Let's see, see what happened. I'm off balance for that, for that momentary time there because, because I had to kind of jerk my foot out in order to get back into a standing position. So it makes me vulnerable to a forward throw. So again, I am here, you go backwards. That, see how that violent motion of getting my foot out of there really puts, I'm standing out toes and one foot. And so all you need to do is you just do the kubenage. Down I go. So, what we can do is I'll start out. Koichigari, Ashigake. You do the counter one. Now you do. Now, what's really fun to see is, is more advanced students doing that because they do it with a huge amount of force. It's kind of like when you're doing Joe or Boken or something and after you kind of get the sequence and the beat to the whole thing, you really start going really hard with it. Well, they do this really hard. They'll start out with Koichi Makikomi and they'll hit the person, partner as hard as they can. And the guy draws his foot back and then they do Ashigake and he steps out of it and then they do the final throw. And so it doesn't have to be done really soft and it's also, it doesn't have to be done only for beginners, but it can be advanced students that do it. And they can add whatever technique to the end of it they want to add to it. But it's the idea that it gets a sequence of events going. You get stuck into a, into a motion that your partner is imposing upon you by doing the throws, and it gives you a way out of that. And so by doing that counter one, redirecting your partner a little bit, he takes an awkward step, but it gives you an advantage that you can come in and do. Ipan Seoinage, Taitoshi, Harai Goshi, whatever technique that you want to try to do. Go ahead and try that. Counter one with the throw at the end. Okay. Most of the techniques in Zen Judo are, are pretty comparable to, to what the Kodokan did. Um, but I want to illustrate one thing that, that they do in Zen Judo that they don't do in Kodokan Judo, and that's called stringing techniques together. And so we started out with Ashigake, um, which is leg hook. And let's see, I'll turn you around this way. And so it's, it's a fairly balanced technique. Both feet are flat on the floor. Um, beginners have a pretty good feeling for this because they've got a lot of control at this point and they're not standing on one leg. So they do that, okay. The second technique that happens, and, and actually an orange belt technique, is called Osoto Garuma. Now in the Kodokan syllabus, this is, a, this is probably a second degree black belt technique. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's a really kind of a cool technique, but it's, but it's not something that beginners do very well. But, there, uh, but I saw a version of it today in Aikido. When we, were, when we were doing that. And this one starts the same way, starts here, but instead of, instead of just hooking the leg, it's a bump. 
And all you're doing is you're bumping your partner's hips out from underneath you. So, real simple Osoto Garuma. Um, I teach it actually three ways. One, first one is just kind of let go, and so you, the person just kind of tips over. I've seen Steven Seagal do that a lot. The next one is, is you kind of hold the person in front of you, and then the third one is you really drive their hips right out from underneath them, and it ends up making a fairly big fall. So you can do you can do Osoto Garuma in three different versions, okay? But going back to the string, the next technique is <laughs> Osoto Gake. Now I'm forgetting things. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the next one is is you step here and you're gonna step back through. <laughs> Osoto Otoshi, that's what it is. It's Osoto Otoshi. So this one, we always talk about having a C step. And so your leg makes a C shape. See, now it's ending up beginning to be a bigger fall also. Okay, then after this, then you do Osoto Gari. Because Osoto Gari involves <clears throat> a bit of a push with a hip that you get from, from Osoto Garuma. It's got that hooking motion that you get from Osoto Otoshi, and it's got a balancing motion. All three of the, the three of the first techniques, all your feet were on the floor. Now we go to one leg. And, and uh, actually, you can put your arm around behind your partner. I'm going to throw you, but I'm not going to throw you. All right, I'm going to pick you up off the ground. But if I put my arm around behind my partner rather than on his collar, I can actually... <laughs> <laughs> I can hold him up. He feels the technique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very, very high up in the thigh, and the idea is it's a bump, and the idea is to lift him up off the ground with control, not like, yeah, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that kicking motion. Osotogari can be done with a tremendous amount of control, and so the Zen program teaches takes it in steps. And so they start out with Ashigake, mm -hmm. both feet on the floor, Osoto Garuma, both feet on the floor, um, Osoto Otoshi, both feet on the floor, and then Osoto Gari after that. But let's just go back. I wanted to show the string. Let's go back and let's just do Osoto Garuma. Step, bump. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one is called te hiza sase. Te hand, hiza, knee, sase means to block. Te hiza sase. And this one, this one is a goofiest technique. Because all I want to do is I want to turn around here, and there's money on the floor. <laughs> all right, so turn around in front of your partner and just reach for the money. <laughs> if you do it quickly, he goes straight over the top. <laughs> Want to try straight over the top? Oh, sure. Oh, sure, he says, here. Yeah. <laughs> but slow, slow is here. And the key to this is, is what I'm doing with my shoulder. Because my shoulder is down on top of his bicep. And as I drop down, I'm dropping his bicep down toward the ground, right over the, his little toe. And that's what makes that work. So I'm leaning on him. And the process of bending over just gets me to, to push down at that shoulder. So I need to hold tight with my left hand on his sleeve as I just reach down for the floor. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> I want to get you some fun stuff. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Anybody have any questions? Nice. Nick Sensei? That's lovely. No, that was fun. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a great ending to the great weekend, and thank you all for Here, we'll, we'll, we'll follow tradition here. Ring around the rosy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, should I stand and show this chart, or? Yeah, you can, you can show the chart, and uh, uh, I can zoom in on it. Okay, okay.
Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it and explain what, what right. how the structure of this is. All right. You're in a great spot right there. All right. Okay.